Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech.com video. We're going to be talking about the physics from the video on the PS4 and some more speculation on the CPU clock speed. Now, we'll talk about the physics first. The video have gone on record and they have said that they are more than happy to support physics on the PS4 and then of course given some marketing speak about just how important physics is for games. Now, to be honest with you, I actually do kind of agree with the marketing speak. Physics in games now is really important and I'm not necessarily saying NVIDIA physics or whatever, I'm just talking about physics in games. It doesn't matter how good of an environment the developer manages to create, realism can be shot to crap in seconds flat if the environment doesn't behave how you would expect it. For example, if you, for example, were to shoot a piece of wood what would you expect to happen? Would you expect it to just nothing? Would you just expect maybe it to fall apart? No, you'd expect bullet, uh, the bullet to you know make splinters fly out and so forth. Obviously, depending on the thickness of the wood, you know you'd see different levels of splinters, different levels of damage. Same thing, for example, if you were to pour a jug of water, what would you expect to happen? Would you just expect the water just fall on the floor like nothing happened? No, you'd expect, you know, splashes everywhere. And most of this stuff um, is becoming a lot better now in games. Uh, for example, hair and the way clothing moves and so on. But it still has a way to go. And most of the reason for that is physics. Now, we're going to really go over quickly over physics here. I'm not going to go too in depth onto it. I'll probably do another video for that. But um, there are a couple of types of physics. One is PPU. Now that's physics processing unit. Uh, these don't really exist anymore. These were kind of the precursors to the modern day graphics cards. Um, after NVIDIA acquired a gear, uh, that's A-G-E-I-A -E if you guys want to Google, Physics development moved from the PPU type of extension cards. Now, these cards, for those of you who are not that familiar with them, but kind of retro gamers, if you're familiar with the add-on cards like the Voodoo 2 and Voodoo 1, which were took over the, the 2D funk, or should I say 3D functionality when you loaded up a game, uh, they're very similar. And those were very, very early 3D graphics cards, of course. The difference is th their job, and I'm talking about the PPU cards, was only for physics. Now, fast forward a couple of years and NVIDIA's acquisition, and basically, with their redesign of the graphics card, it's become highly parallel architecture. And this highly parallel architecture lends itself extremely well for hardware physics. And how that basically works is there are, you know, tons and tons of little CPUs, Let's just call them CPUs for the sake of this anyway, called stream processors, and they could be divided up to do different tasks. So, for example, let's say you're playing Batman Arkham City. When you first configure the game, it will say, hey, what do you want? You know, what level of graphics, what level of physics? And if you disable physics or what have you, then, and you load the game up, the graphics card's not rendering any physics, obviously. However, if you, do, uh, and basic physics in game will be taking care of the CPU. On the other hand, if you do enable physics, what happens is that the GPU, graphics card, is splitting the work between actually rendering the graphical scene, in other words, textures on, say, Batman's cape, all the way to the walls and the lighting, down to actually making, say, smoke and so on up here. Now, the negative, of course, is let's say your graphics card's just about able to handle the scene at 1080p. What happens, of course, if you enable physics, is it puts further strain on the GPU. Therefore, your frame rate starts to tank. So that's fairly obvious. Now, software physics, on the other hand, of course, relies on the CPU to render this stuff. Now, the video physics can indeed be ran on the CPU. Uh, but it just doesn't really work as well as being handled through the GPU, uh, through CUDA units. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, when it was first released, it wasn't nowhere near as good on the CPU. It was really a massive, massive impact on the performance. And that's because it was based on x87 instructions without any multi-threading optimizations. Therefore, when you were running the code on the CPU, they found massive drop-offs. 
Now, the CPU physics to, for, um, from version 2 had been developed to allow multi-threading, but, and you knew there was going to be a but, it was up to the developer to make use of it. In other words, if the developer didn't really start to write the games to make use of it, it just wouldn't really work. It would only kind of sit there on the one core. Another version, that would be version 3, didn't do that. Multi-threading and SSE would be automatically used by the physics SDK, or Source Development Kit if you prefer. Furthermore, this also helped to unify the code base from all the platforms. So I guess the real question is, and the question I've got asked, is how is it going to work on the PS4? Well, there are a couple of options. We'll get into the software one first. First of all is the CPU. Now, the CPU of the PS4 has got eight cores. That gives them quite a lot of leeway to do things. Um, straight away, right there, they could quite easily handle most physics calculations on that CPU. The second option is a bit of speculation on my part. I have done some Googling, but I can't find that much. Maybe later on, when more develop developers kits, I'm sorry, have been released. But this comes back to, do you remember when uh, the PS4 specifications were rumoured? And the rumoured specifications said that four of the GCN cores uh, which of course are the graphics card next cores that the PS4's uh, GPU is made out of, um, were relegated to compute functionality. Now, if you read between the lines of compute functionality, what that really comes down to is physics, at least for gaming. However, this changed, and there were no longer cores that were relegated only to this task, and now what happened is that more like the PC, you can basically split the hardware however you would like it. In this case, or should I say developers would like it. In other words, if they want, say, oh, I don't know, 17 of the GCN cores to be for graphics and one for compute, that's cool. If they want all four graphics, if they want to split it 10 and 8, or however they want it, you get the idea. So, if you're not that familiar with NVIDIA as a company, they have been rather protective of physics and at least running on hardware. And there are a couple of reasons for that, but one is that it's one of the main reasons to buy their GPU. Um, now, obviously, they can't be they can't be blamed for this. Um, now, this was originally done on the technology of CUDA on the, the GPU of the uh, NVIDIA cards. And that CUDA similarly allowed certain uh, applications from the Adobe Suite, for example, to be uh, accelerated by the GPU. In other words, it was rendered via the GPU rather than just the CPU, which drastically sped up processing times. An example of that application would be, say, Adobe After Effects or Premiere. Um, since then, ATI, or should I say now AMD, have really jumped into the fray, changed their, uh, changed their GPU architecture up a lot, and now, of course, modern day GPUs from AMD can also do similar. And with the GCN cores, I don't really feel that it's out of the realm of reason for NVIDIA to have basically allowed the developers to use AMD's GPU cores to be able to render on f hardware physics on the uh, system. Now obviously they've not announced this yet because NVIDIA don't really want to say hey we've got it working on the system. An example of this would be that if you were to have bought an AMD graphics card let's say back in the day, let's say you bought the Radeon uh, you know, 5700 or whatever and let's say for example you were to say uh, you know what I really want hardware physics I don't want to buy a new you know, NVIDIA card because I, I like my AMD card, but I you know want hardware physics. What some people were doing is they would go into uh, an you know, online store and buy a cheap ish uh, graphics card from NVIDIA. And that graphics card, especially if it's second hand, would cost very little, but it would be able to handle the hardware physics. But NVIDIA didn't like that too much, and there were some uh, arguments, um, you know, from the rights of consumers in that they said hey you know what we can throw any combination of stuff we want the video said now nah, actually we don't really want this to work like this and they disabled it and even made the uh, uh, gravity reversed and other bits and pieces but as far as i'm aware it's been somewhat settled now 
regardless, it's a very good thing that NVIDIA are getting involved in the PS4 development. And as I said, I think it's kind of mixed emotions for them. Now, before we get on and close the video up, there's also been a couple of other rumours in regards to the CPU. And that is that it's going to be running at 2 gigahertz. Now, these rumours have been going around for a couple of weeks now. And basically, the story is that the the division of Sony, who were responsible for the demo, didn't want you know any crashes or whatever for the you know the PS4 or what have you, and that the demo chips have been only at 1.6, but the real proper uh, full PS4, the one that we're going to actually be seeing on your shelves, are going to be two gigahertz rather than 1.6, and indeed even the development kits are only running at 1.6. Is this true? In my opinion, no. There's a couple of reasons for this. I mean, okay, I could always be wrong, but here it is. First of all, as far as I'm aware, PS4 has been officially confirmed by Sony with all the specifications. Um, in other words, what clock speed it is and so on. The second reason for this is that the Jaguars are capable of running at 2 gigahertz. Yes. But... <sighs> Capable and will be are two different things. There's a reason for that. That's top end Jaguars. And as I've said before with yields, the problem with yields is that they can go wrong. In other words, let's say this just used completely arbitrarily made up numbers. And let's just say the PS4 are 1.6 gigahertz chips. Let's say 100 chips are made, and let's say 90 of them are capable of running at 1.6 gigahertz with all the other specifications. Okay, on the other hand, let's say at 2 gigahertz, only let's say 75 of the chips um, are capable, so in other words, 15 less out of every 100. Now, obviously, these completely made up numbers, but you get the point. The reason is that this causes several problems for Sony and AMD one, greater cost, in other words. More of them aren't capable, therefore more of them aren't useful to the PS4. And remember, there have been some customizations on these chips as well. Number two, it takes longer to manufacture and get the amount necessary to put the console out. Now, let's say in three years' time, this is going to be an issue, as this PS4 is likely not to be flying off the shelves, at least at that rate. I mean, obviously, it'll probably still be popular and people are still buying it, but not the launch frenzy. And if they only go, say, each country and allocate, like, you know, 10,000 PS4s or something stupid because they're not able to produce enough of them because, you know, the components are too difficult to produce, well, that's not good for business at all, is it? Therefore, in my opinion, it's better for Sony, it makes more sense, to be more... Let's go with conservative on the specifications. I, I'm not saying it won't be at 2 gigahertz. Um, it could be a sneaky thing from Sony. Uh, but in my opinion, it's very unlikely. This room is, and the confirmed specifications are shown at 1.6, and I don't think at this stage that they were going to suddenly, you know, miraculously increase the speed by some, you know, amazing coincidence or some chance or what have you that's going to be from 1.6 to 2. It's just not really going to happen, um, in my personal opinion. The PS4's CPU is plenty powerful enough anyway for the games. Obviously, as I've said before in a couple of videos, it is not meant to compete with PC gaming. It won't compete with PC gaming, at least the highest specifications. That's confirmed. Everyone knows this. If All you have to do is look at the GPU of the um, both systems, and you can see that you know the latest cards from, say, NVIDIA and ATI, or should I say AMD, have already beaten the specifications of course it is a closed platform and so on but even if you say right now that even let's even go as far as to say it's even in say two years time it's not going to be but what it is is a massive improvement from the current generation of console technology and a very nice platform so anyway um besides uh, Microsoft don't really need Sony to make another surprise announcement on how much better the PS4 is than they originally thought. So I hope for Microsoft's sake anyway, it's not running at 2 gigahertz. And no, that's not a dig at Microsoft. You guys know I don't play favourites. I'm just saying that they really need a bit of a break right now. Regardless, hopefully you guys have found the video somewhat informative and entertaining. As usual, I am happy to answer any questions. As I've said before, and you guys are kind of getting the message, I do 
answer on Facebook a lot more frequently than I do on YouTube. There's a couple of reasons for this. One, I get alerted to it very easily on Facebook because I'm regularly on Facebook. And two, there are a couple of us who are running the YouTube channel and so it's a bit difficult for me to answer all the questions and generally speaking as well we get a lot of spam comments you'll be surprised at the amount of uh, spam comments we're receiving right now I guess it's because we're just starting to grow a little bit and you know we're not still big enough that they feel that they can't sell me 1 million views or whatever anyway uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video as I said I've got to go take care of yourselves and bye for now